You're watching the Prozex Project YouTube channel. Welcome to the channel, everyone. I'd like to start off by saying, first of all, thank you for clicking, but in this video, you're gonna see three things. First, whenever this ball joint broke, what it was like, where I was stranded. Secondly, you're gonna see how I replaced it. Actually, I replaced, I show you in the video of me replacing the passenger side because I'd already replaced the driver's side when that broke, but it's gonna be the same. And then third, you're gonna see why it broke, what it, what it looks like after it does break, and some things that hopefully will help you identify if yours is about to break. So stay tuned. So here is why you change your lower ball, ball joint whenever you're also changing everything else. See that? Yeah. And it's smashing there. I'm surprised the tire's not flat. But also, this popped loose because it smashed that in, popping that out. So. Note to self, whenever you have to change everything, make sure you change your lower ball joints, especially when you have almost 300,000 miles. joint that broke and whenever you pull this down you see there was no grease left in there it was all dried up and here is why ball joints break so this sits inside a cup and you see how this is chewed up so this is on the um below the wheel this is the bottom that's attached to the wheel hub and everything. And this is the suspension, the control arm. This sits in there, this pulls down, and that cup is what holds on this part, this bottom part of the ball joint. The whole weight of the front of the vehicle literally holds on by the side of the cup on both sides. So that way it can turn and it's crazy to think that all of that weight is supported just on this. <laughs> Pretty much the sides of that, of this, wrapping around are what hold the front of the car up. It's, it's just mind boggling that it holds on the way it does. So after years of, so this is a non-serviceable non -serviceable, serviceable part. I can't see it. If you notice, 
right here on the new one, both I put in, there's a, uh, a grease zerk. So you can put grease in there so that way it doesn't dry out and wear off and break loose. It is a wear item, it will still happen, but have it, it gives it a much longer service life. And when you look in there, you see how it was just worn. It's like, that's where it's supposed to sit and it hasn't been up there in years. <laughs> like all that. And so you can also see here, it's it's not round anymore, it's, it's tapered. It rounds and then kind of tapers down like straight just from rubbing on it. And you can see the, the wear area too. So, I'm sure if I hammered on it, I could pop it back in there, but it's something to think about. If it, looking back, the only sign I had was that my steering was, it seemed a little, a little stiff, but nothing too bad. And I, I replaced the upper ball joint, the inner and out, outer uh, control arms, not control arms, tie rod ends. So inner and outer tie rods, new upper ball joint. I didn't do these because I was doing a bunch of other things and they looked good. Well, the passenger side was a re was replaced. That one was still good. Driver side, pretty sure this is factory, was not good. So that's where I went wrong. I should have just replaced these all at the same time, but now, now I know. I got off very fortunate, so. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And remember, maintenance is never overrated.